Hi, good morning. How are you all doing? Good. We're going to have a non-technical discussion. Okay. And it's going to be on the topic of automated migrations to the cloud. Completely new concept, right? Here are some interesting things for everybody to see. Today, when companies are migrating to the cloud, they have to use a myriad of tools to manage the cloud as well, to optimize the cloud, and so on and so forth. The pressure to migrate and the time window in which companies can migrate is going to keep shrinking, right? And these are business pressures. Whereas the talent that is required, nor the time that uh, is needed in the manual process is available any longer. So how do we solve this problem? And that is going to be the topic of my discussion, right? So the theme here is automated migrations set the stage for accelerated digital transformation. When we look around this entire floor here, we see so many technologies, a lot of them around AI, a lot of them around new business models, data and so on and so forth. But the prerequisite for being able to use all of these technologies is that you've got to be on the cloud first, okay? So, what exactly do we mean by transformation? Okay, and how is the cloud's role changing over time and what is it going to be in the future? Number three is how we as a company have solved this problem to deliver migrations that can be 2x, 3x, 4x faster than the conventional model, right? So when we talk about digital transformation, most companies, most people think that it's about using a whole bunch of technologies to modernize, right? About five years ago, we did a massive research and translated it into a book that's in front of you where we were able to define digital transformation in one sentence, okay? Digital transformation is all about reimagining what your business stands for, what your value proposition is in a time and an era where the customer is not static. What the customer is looking for, how they spend their money, what's the share of the wallet they're going to invest in you, how they engage with you, how they repurchase, all of this is changing constantly, right? And so how do you lock into a customer that's moving so fast, right? And therefore, digital transformation isn't about great websites or cool applications or anything of that nature. The most fundamental thing in digital transformations is able to is you being able to visualize whether you appeal to that customer or not. Let's look back over the last 10 to 15 years, there were some great brands, many of them are 100 years old, 150 years old. They don't exist anymore. And the reason why they don't exist anymore is because they stopped appealing to a customer that's already moved into the digital era. And it doesn't really matter whether the business is a consumer business or whether it's a B2B business, right? So therefore, as, as, as we go forward, the pressure to transform and the window of opportunity to transform is going to keep shrinking faster and faster and faster, okay? What you see in front of you is a core finding from the research that we did. About three years ago, right at the beginning of COVID, four years ago, only about 7% of companies around the world successfully transformed. Everybody was investing, but only 7% succeeded. And when you look at the main driving factor of their success, it stems from the fact that they changed what they stood for and then digitalized. Whereas a big, big percentage of companies that were attempting to transform, did it the other way around, right? And this window of opportunity, the time that is available for companies to transform is going to keep shrinking. And that really is the theme of the book as well, in the sense that it is a fault line, but it is a digital fault line. It means the innovators in your industry, the di disruptors in your industry, are going to constantly keep moving that line forward, right? So therefore, competitively, how do you engage in, in such a motion? How do you accelerate your transformation? 
So what you see here in this chart is on the x-axis, you see companies transforming their portfolio and on the y-axis, you see companies transforming their engagement with customers and their engagement pretty much with all stakeholders, right? What is missing in this is how do you do it? How do you achieve global scalability? How do you set the state, the platform and the foundation to transform? And that's where the cloud comes in, right? So up until now, we have thought about the cloud as a provider of infrastructure, right? As a place to store application, as a place to store data and to run analytics and so on and so forth. But what we are now going to see is that the central role of the cloud is to create the ability and the, the tools that you require in order to be able to disrupt your own business and the business that goes on in your industry, right? Now, in order to be able to do that, you need a lot of power to compute, a lot of power to store, to update, and so on and so forth, right? I mean, just imagine, 70% of the data that your company needs to be able to transform is not in the inside the walls of the company, it's outside. How do you access that? How do you process that in real time? How do you generate the insights that are required for a business to keep chugging along, keep moving, keep disrupting, okay? That is going to be the role of the cloud, right? Now, everybody knows a lot of this stuff, right? But what we are wrestling with is how do we get there as fast as we can, right? How do we race to the cloud? Sometimes I feel that we have constructed these big buildings called the cloud, except that when you enter the lobby, there are no elevators, and everybody has to go up using the staircase, right? And that is the problem that we have attempted to solve, and we have done it very successfully, right? The key thing to remember is that it's like getting to an airport, right? In any busy city, the plane is not going to wait for you to show up, right? Unfortunately, today when companies are attempting to do migrations, right, they use a whole bunch of tools, they've invested a lot of money in creating the foundation, their rules, their policies, and so on and so forth. By the time they're done with that, it's almost a year, sometimes a year and a half. Migrations in companies that are a billion dollars in size or more take years. When you talk, we're we are dealing with customers, for example, who are 50 billion in revenue, 100 billion in revenue, okay? 20,000 machines to migrate, 10,000 applications to migrate. If they follow the same process that exists today, it's gonna to take them five to seven years to migrate. And their industry is not going to wait, right? So, it's like getting through a traffic jam, right? And is there a way for us to fly over the traffic and get to the airport instead of having to struggle through the traffic, right? To reiterate this point that the customer isn't going to wait, let's actually visualize what your business should look like as soon as these migrations are done, right? And the way to think about that is to actually work from the customer backward, right? In your industry, you know who your customers are, whether it's a business-to-business -business, uh, model, whether it's a consumer model, whether it's a channel model, whatever it be. You have to think deeply about that customer and you have to imagine that that customer won't be at that place after a certain point in time. So if we accept that, then we start working backwards from there, which is you theoretically imagine where is my business going to be and if I have two years or if I have one year, right, to reimagine that business and get there, how do I move fast to achieve those goals, right? And so it starts from here. When you start from here, you can't see that picture. But when you see that picture and work backwards, everything becomes very obvious, okay? So we, Triants, have solved this problem by automating the entire migration cycle from start to finish with a zero code and a SaaS platform. So I'm really, really proud to introduce 
our platform Concierto to all of you. Concierto essentially unifies your entire cloud journey under one umbrella. With the same platform, you can migrate to the cloud, you can modernize your pass uh, layer, you can manage the cloud as well as your on-prem environment with the same team, and you can maximize the cloud. So over here, you see a lot of tools that are providing you with observability. The reason why we use the word maximize is because the platform uses AI and algorithms to remediate anomalies, overspend, capacity utilization, all of these issues in real time, right? So we have accelerated this journey uh, from your on-prem environment or any other cloud to AWS at least 200% faster. If the company is ready for change, the speed can be accelerated even further. Right? So, just to break this down a little bit, Concierto has four major solutions in it. You can migrate from on-prem to the cloud, to AWS Outpost. You can migrate between clouds. You can migrate back to on-prem if you'd like to do that. That is what the platform is capable of handling, okay? It runs the entire process, beginning from discovery to assessments, to creating all of your landing zones, to scheduling your migration, to actually telling you what the cost is going to be for, the, for, for your future in the infrastructure and in the applications layer. And it executes these migrations. Everything is zero code. So that's the solution number one, right? Number two is manage. We can't find enough people to be able to manage the AWS cloud and on-prem. If you have some other cloud, now we're talking about a splintered IT ops group. Finding them, hiring them, managing them, keeping the costs under control, all of these are issues. So Concerto Manage allows you to handle the entire provisioning and IT ops cycle, health check, patching, event management, monitoring, all of this stuff for all your environments, be it any of the clouds and on-prem, from a single pane of glass with the same team. And the beauty of the platform is we have simplified it so much that people who are using VMware today will find Concierto Manage much easier to use. So the same team can now transition into managing the cloud, okay? Number three is modernize. We have automated the entire pass layer of modernization, right? So you can upgrade operating systems, you can upgrade databases and so on as the migration is getting executed. And that doesn't need special manual effort, okay? And number four is maximize. Instead of focusing only on FinOps, what we're doing is to give customers a 360 degree view of their entire infrastructure. So you can see SLAs, you can see performance, you can see capacity utilization, you can see events that are taking place, including security events, and you can set up your entire org in the platform and set budgets. So we are talking about a concept of charge forward as opposed to doing charge back, right? And you can control how your money is being spent on the cloud, as opposed to reacting and reconciling and having all of these debates Oh, I didn't use this, I didn't use that. Why are you charging me so much and so on and so forth, right? So that is all, you know, uh, available to you under one platform. Concierto is SaaS. It is hosted on AWS. It is zero code. It is certified, you know, by some of the most important agencies for SaaS platform. So it's a very, very trusted way of being on the cloud. A quick visual representation talking specifically about migration is that you can source the infrastructure or applications or even attach data from any of these sources and move it to the cloud. We are at the AWS event here today. So in AWS, we can migrate to the cloud or outpost environment, right? One very, very cool uh, but complex technical aspect of the platform is that if you're in a company that has tens of thousands of servers and applications to migrate, it's a global company. You can deploy multiple instances of Concerto and run these assessments and run these migrations in parallel. Right? 
we are very, very proud to have built up an ecosystem uh, very quickly in the last few months. Very proud to share with you that Triand and Amazon have signed a strategic collaboration agreement. And there is some really great news that I'm going to share with you in a second. But first of all, who is using Concerto? Right? Some of the largest companies, state governments, uh, local governments in the US, universities, and we're doing this at a global scale uh, with, with all of these organizations, and you can see what the brands are. We are also very proud to have built up an ecosystem of partners very quickly, and this is a global uh, capacity and capability that's going to be available to customers anywhere in the world. The platform is also multilingual, so if you're running an organization where people speak different languages, guess what? It can be personalized at an individual user level. Right? Our customers speak for the platform, right? The thousands of servers migrated in a span of months. Yeah? We're looking at workloads up to 10,000, 15,000, 23,000, 30,000 VMs and applications to be migrated in one year. So the platform is delivering throughput that would otherwise take three to four years, which means so much of operating costs and so much of money that's going to go out, and the window is closing to transform, right? So we are here to help you solve that problem of time to transform. We are here to help you solve the problem of talent availability by driving up productivity of your workforce. And we are here to do it at a very, very low cost. And with that, I'm really proud to share an announcement on behalf of Triance as well as AWS, right? As part of our collaboration agreement, our platform has gone through a very stringent diligence by AWS, and we are proud to have received this badge of AWS Qualified Software. The platform is available on the AWS Marketplace, and so if you have agreements with AWS where you have made commitments to spend X on the cloud, guess what? Your expenditure on our platform is partly offset in that, okay? And number three is that AWS is paying us for you to use our software. So when you stack up all of the financial incentives that are available to you, the software cost of migration, map credits, map cash that is paid to us, and additional credits that we bring to customers because of these fast migrations, your cost to migrate will be less than 10% and even in many cases zero. There are customer situations where we have given extra credits to customers as compared to what you would spend if you were to do this using the manual process, right? So it's a cool way to get onto the cloud as fast as you can, right? And do it for almost free, right? So really, really thrilled with this partnership. There are dozens of customers who are signing up, dozens of partners who are signing up, and it's been a great privilege for me to stand here and speak to all of you. Please spread the word and please come to our booth. It's right behind, two minute walk from here. And we have a dedicated conference room. Our people are there looking forward to catch up with you and show you all the stuff that I talked about live. Okay? So thank you all. And let's start changing the paradigm and migrating to the cloud. Good luck.